Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle with MS FireNet. Today we're going to be going over some patient packaging techniques on a few of the different devices we carry. Also, we're going to talk about a few considerations we have depending on the scenarios at which we found the patients. Are we going to be lifting this patient in a horizontal environment or a vertical environment? Uh, is this patient just somebody that we want to package at a wreck to keep them from sliding back down a slippery hillside. Those are many different things we want to consider when we package this patient. We want to make sure that we package the patient according to the mission. That could be overkill or that could be even worse, something that we didn't package the patient good enough for the environment we're about to carry them through. The first device that I'm going to go over today is the traditional Stokes basket, something that we would use for high angle rescues as well as just simple low angle rescues. Uh, this basket already has our patient in it. The patient is on a backboard and attached to the backboard. Uh, before we do this, we obviously want to make sure this patient might need spinal considerations, C spinal mobilization. But for all of that, uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to consider this patient to be spinally immobilized and packaged, and then we're going to start packaging him into our device to carry this patient. Okay, from this angle, you can see the patient is attached to the backboard uh, with these straps. We've already got the patient inside of the Stokes basket and now we're going to utilize the first thing, uh, a patient harness if we're going to do a technical rescue, something where we're going to be moving the patient vertically or horizontally uh, in a technical environment. We want to make sure this patient has a patient harness uh, as a last resort on him. Typically what we're going to use for a patient harness or a victim harness is 20 feet of tubular webbing. We keep our webbing daisy chained so it's easy to get to. And some of us prefer to leave these tied in a loop and some not. This one's not tied in a loop, so all I'm going to do is tie this into a loop. Okay, now I've got my webbing tied into a loop 20 feet. There are several different ways to tie in a victim harness. One of the easiest ways to me is just to take a bite of webbing and slide it underneath the patient's lower back. Now that you've got it slid underneath his lower back, just extend one piece of the webbing uh, or part of the loop in between his legs. Okay, now I've got a piece of webbing or a bite of webbing in between his legs and on each side of the patient. There's several ways of doing this. If you want to make this into a class 3 type harness, then we can take this webbing over the patient's arm and up on top of the shoulder. This is also going to be largely dependent on what the size of your patient is, uh, depending on what you can use your webbing for. Okay, I've got a lot of extra slack here. I could tie this into a knot to save space. Uh, just make a square knot on each side to take up all the slack to make this a little bit tighter on him. All I did tying the square knot was just to take slack out of the rope. I'm not going to attach a carabiner to this point. I'm going to incorporate all the pieces of webbing to attach the carabiner so that he is connected in an interlocking loop of webbing. That's the strongest way to do it. So I take my carabiner, incorporate all the pieces of webbing, and that's going to go back to my master point of the rigging uh, when we go to lift this patient. There are several different systems you can use for attaching a patient or securing a patient into your Stokes basket. One of the cheapest, easiest ways, and most everybody has it, is with a 30 foot piece of tubular webbing. You may need a little bit more depending on the size of your patient, but 30 feet is a general, uh, good general rule. We keep our 30 foot pieces of webbing daisy chained, and what you can do is girth hitch this to the bottom of the basket. And now you've already got it in a position to package the patient when you get there. You don't have to worry about carrying the webbing. It's already attached to your basket. So this is one method. Remove the daisy chain with the halfway point girth hitched onto the bottom of the basket at the foot, at the foot side of the basket. So that leaves us with two different tails of webbing. One webbing, uh, tail of the webbing is going to go to the patient's right, and one tail of the webbing is going to go to the patient's left. Uh, in this method, we're going to take a bite or a loop of webbing and twist it three times and place it over the patient's foot. We'll do that on both sides. 
and place those both under the patient's feet. To take the slack out of this, we pull downward and back upward and just ratchet the slack out of the, out of the webbing. Okay, now we have our patient's feet secured with three loops or three wraps of webbing on each foot. Uh, and now what we're going to do is do a diagonal lashing between the vertical post on this basket all the way up to the, to the pelvic area. Uh, so each tail, I like to come back across the shins. That keeps the feet from being pulled outward. It keeps them pulled inward together. Uh, considerations you want to take though is if you have somebody with a tib-fib fracture or a dislocated knee or something like that, we may want to avoid that area and move our cross, uh, the diagonal piece of this webbing to another location. But we're simply just going to take this and crisscross back our, our vertical post. We don't want to wrap this around the rails of the, the Stokes basket because this may be a rub rail. We might bump into something. It's also where you put your hands if you need to carry the patient and move them. Okay, so I've done one side of the diagonal lashing, now I'll do the other side. Okay, at this point there's a few different things you can do. Uh, if you want to get the slack out of these straps and get it tensioned really good, what we can do is make a girth hitch on each side of this and use it as a ratchet to take up the slack out of all this webbing. Okay, to make the girth hitch, the easiest thing to do is to take a bite of webbing and place it on the foot side of a vertical post. Bring the tail of the webbing around the other side of the vertical post and through that bite you just made. Now we've made a girth hitch that we can ratchet and get all of this the slack out of this webbing to tie this patient in securely. Okay I've got a girth hitch on this side too and so you can see the way this ratchet works. That gets everything real tight. We should do this ratchet somewhere around the pelvic area, right around the hips. Uh, so now there's two different ways you can do this. If you're running out of webbing, you don't have to come back across the, the chest. You could come up to the next vertical post and then come across. That saves your webbing uh, length a little bit. But if you have enough, you can diagonal across again. Okay, at this point I've got it diagonal uh, across his chest. And then to finish it off, I'll come across the his chest right at his breastbone and tie a, uh, a square knot. And then after the square knot, we'll tie a safety knot on each side. Now, with this webbing secured like this, diagonal with three wraps around the feet uh, and the girth hitch around the vertical post near the hips to take the slack out, the patient's pretty secure. You can't, you can't even slide the patient in this, back, in this uh, Stokes basket. Okay, here's just another option that's out there. This is a commercially available system by CMC called the patient tying system. Uh, basically, it's separated into a piece of red webbing and a piece of blue webbing, one on one side, one on the other. Uh, you pre-rig this to your basket. You don't do it on scene. You have this already attached to your basket. And then you just lay the straps off to the side when you place the, the patient into the basket. So right now, I've already got a patient harness or victim harness on this patient. Uh, the patient's attached to the backboard and the backboard's in the Stokes basket. All we do here is bring our diagonal lashings. They have a little bull ring on them and we attach that to the clips opposite uh, of each side. And we do this for blue goes to blue and red goes to red. And that's pretty much it. After we do that, we need to take the slack out of it. And at the foot end of this, there's a little ratchet strap and we just cinch it up. Okay, right here at the foot side, just take the slack out of the blue and then cinch it up. And I'll take the slack out of the red and cinch it up. And that's it.